All right, so we back with another video. We got pretty much, well, this ain't gonna be the last part of the tier list. I think we're gonna do one more at the end of the finals, and we're gonna try to rank every NBA player. Yeah, I think we're gonna rank the players that's in the finals after the finals, and then we'll probably do one for the whole season going into next year or whatever. But yeah, it's time to rank the players that's in the playoffs. Let's go ahead and take all these boys out. All right, so now we got all the players out, players out the way. Let's go ahead and hop into it. We got the same tiers, MVP playoff, riser, caliber, all that type of stuff. Y'all seen the other ones. So, way we going to do this, we're going to rank the players based off who played and all that type of stuff. So, if you didn't play, I'm going to just keep you where you've been at the whole playoffs. There's no reason point for me to even rank you. But we're going to rank these guys based off how well they played in the conference finals. Not for the semis, not for, yeah, we're just going to base it off that. Now, we can do all this other. We're going to also predict based off the finals. So then we're going to take the Lakers because they lost. Celtics because they're losers. They lost. And we're going to rank only the Heat players and the Nuggets players. Makes sense. Let's go ahead and move into it. All right. So we're going to go bottom to top. All right. So Blake Griffin didn't play. Mo Bamba didn't play. Malik Beasley didn't play. Victor Oladipo injured. Udonis Haslam didn't play. Now, Lonnie Walker, he played. In my opinion, um, Lonnie Walker. He probably should have played more, but he didn't really do much in this series. I guess he can stay where he is, role player. Dennis Schroeder, um, as a roamer defensively, I think he's one of the better def off-ball defenders, but like they kind of just left him on the island for the most part against Jamal Murray the whole series. Um, and Jamal Murray was kind of killing whoever they put on him, whether it was Vando, Schroeder, LeBron, Reeves. It didn't really matter. Like Even 80, it didn't matter. He was kind of hooping. Now, the only game he kind of struggled was kind of the game he kind of had the biggest, like, crazy moment i guess you can say because the fourth quarter he went stupid now the next game he went stupid as well but that like they kind of blew him out the whole game and first half jamal murray was insane but yeah um yeah schroeder not really too mad at. i think he played good defense for the most part but jamal murray was just on a different type of timing um bruce brown i think bruce brown played to about this level i'm gonna put him above hero because hero hasn't played i think he's like a, a high level role player like a role player riser duncan robinson uh, role player riser. I think he was one of the most impactful players on the Heat offensively. I think in game six, if he would have played more in the third quarter, I think we honestly win that game. Him not playing in the third quarter at all when we couldn't score. Um, it was a lot of plays that we was kind of playing for fouls and we just wasn't getting the calls. I think if we have a much better, like a, a better offense, because him and Bam have a really good connection, I think we get Maybe two, maybe even, if we just get a couple more points in the third, we win the game. We kind of struggled offensively after we got into the bonus because they it's like as soon as they got in the bonus, they thought they was going to get fouls. Refs wasn't really calling it no more. It was just really inconsistent refereeing all around in that game. But, yeah, it, it just is what it is. But Duncan Robinson, for the most part, in that series played pretty well. I see people say Duncan played bad, but, like, only people that say he played bad, the same people that say he played bad is the same people that say Bam was ass. When they only look at one side of the court. So, like, I'm not really worried about that. So, yeah. Um, Kevin Love. Kevin Love, for the most part, he was unplayable only because, like, the way the Celtics play, their their whole play style is to spread the floor. And with them spreading the floor is when they're going to set a screen, if you get switched onto, like, a Tatum or JB, there's nobody at the rim because they're spreading the floor. The whole team is out the paint. The only time you'll ever see them be out the paint is, like, if they get a switch with Bam and they get a guard on, like, a, a big and they're just going to dump it down. Or, like, they'll get, like, a small guard on, like, a Marcus Smart and they'll dump it down. That's the only time you ever see that. So, Kevin Love was kind of unplayable in this series because of that fact. But um, I think, for the most part, his rebounding and shooting has been, when he was in the game, it kind of evened it out regardless. Even when he was missing, I think his rebound has been very imp important. So, yeah, I, I keep him where he is. He probably should go down here because he was just unplayable because of that fact. So that is important, but he was a pretty important factor when it comes to sport, floor spacing, when it comes to rebounding. And I think he's going to be even more important in this Nuggets series. Contavious Caldwell Pope, when it comes to Contavious Caldwell Pope, um, I think he was pretty good. I think defensively he was one of the best defenders in the series, and I think – Shooting wise, he was one of the better shooters. I think the one game he kind of struggled for real shooting wise was when he was in foul trouble. But for the most part, he kind of did his job, and I would put him up here with the Duncan Robinsons. I think Duncan Robinson was a little bit better offensively, but I would say, I would say his two way ability was just pretty impactful. But I think Duncan, 
Um, off pool, man. I don't even think Dunga was that bad defensively because we would go into the zone a lot when he was in the game. So they couldn't really target him. So uh, that's a tough one because Dunga was so important for the Heat's offense. I don't think Contavious Caldwell Pope was as important for the Nuggets offense. I think um, if they had like a Bruce Brown in there, I think Bruce Brown was just as good. I think, um, yeah, it's not a lot of Nuggets players on this tier list. You can probably tell there's like really more Celtics, more Lakers than anybody else because that's the two popular teams, I guess you can say. But yeah, um, D'Lo, D'Lo struggled in this series. If he's not really giving you scoring, I think he's been a good playmaker for majority of the playoffs. But in this series, um, LeBron was on the ball more in this series than he was in any other series. I think they should have really had uh, Austin Reeves on the ball board. I wouldn't argue that you should have D'Lo on the ball more, but I think he would have played better overall if he was on the ball more like he was in the other series. Um, but, yeah, even when he wasn't scoring in the other series, he was still a great playmaker. He just really didn't have those same amount of opportunities. He would still be on the floor. It was just he would play a completely – he was, like, for the most part, he was playing a different role. So, I don't, I'm not really too mad at D'Lo because that's what I expected out of D'Lo. I expected D'Lo to kind of flop. I honestly only thought that because I thought he was going to play off the ball coming into the playoffs. But he finally did it because he finally started playing off the ball. And he's not a good defender. Anybody that thought he was a good defender, like, if that's a surprise to you that he couldn't play defense, like, wow. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, shocker, you know? So, yeah, we're going to throw him right there in front of all the people that didn't play. But, yeah. Maybe he probably shouldn't have been playing if LeBron was going to play on the ball that much. Al Horford, Al Horford, to be honest, I mean, Al Horford defensively was pretty good. He was pretty good, but, like, he was kind of inconsistent shooting for the most part in this series. He kind of start. I, it's kind of funny that people was doing, like, the timeout thing, talking about Jimmy did the, ever since Jimmy did the timeout, they was down three. But in the game that Jimmy did the timeout, it was in, like, the second or third quarter, and they won the game by 30. So, like, that counts as a win. And after he did the timeout, that game got significantly worse. Like, I don't I don't really understand what was going on with that. But, yeah, Al Horford did this in game one when they was up, like, 15 or something. It was, like, they was up, like, 15. I don't know how. I don't even think they was up 15. They was going on a run, though, and he did it in, like, the second quarter, and then he stared him down. Jimmy does it in th game three. He's evil. I don't, I don't really know what was going on with that. Um, I'm all for people talking trash. I just, I didn't like when Jimmy was talking trash after game four and they lost, saying they was going to win, and then he was bad again in game five and they lost, and then game six, they lost. He wasn't as talkative going into game seven, and he wasn't really saying anything in game seven. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't really know. He needs to find a balance because he was kind of tripping a little bit. But, yeah, Al Horford, Al Horford, I think he's very important. Like, even if he's not hitting shots, his floor spacing ability, and he's actually a pretty good, like, for as old as he is, he's still very versatile defender. I think he's still one of the best post defenders. That's why he was so important in the 76ers series because that's who they had guarding in B for the most part. And if they was to go against the Nuggets, I think he would be extremely important to guard Jokic because he's a good post def def defender. And we're going to get into the AD stuff. But, yeah, Al Horford, for the most part, I think he's so important when it comes to spacing the floor for Tatum. When, it, like I was saying, because he was make it would make Kevin Love unplayable. Because it, when he screens and Kevin Love gets switched, it makes Kevin Love unplayable. That's very that's super valuable. I would say he's up here. He's like a playoff riser off that alone. Even if he wasn't hitting shots, like his value on offense, the fact that you have to guard him, very, extremely valuable. I think Lowry for the first game he was he was he gave up a big run in the first game. But he did have a good quarter. If it wasn't for that good quarter, he had an awful game. And he's off for the whole series. But game seven, for the most part, played. That's all we need from now. Even if he's not as good as he was in that. We just need a like a toned down version of that. But yeah, that's what we need. Uh, I would say Lowry. I would say Lowry deserves to go right here. Because he was pretty bad. He was pretty bad. Um, Austin Reeves, I think Austin Reeves, for sure, role player riser. I, now, it really depends on what you feel. Like, do you think he's an all-star caliber player? That's on you. 
Um, I think if he would have been on the ball more, he may have been an all-star caliber player. So I probably should put him. He played pretty well in this series, like shooting the ball. Like he was clutch. He was doing a lot of stuff. Now, um, defense wasn't as good in this series as he was against the Warriors. He was playing pretty great defense on Curry. Um, but for the most part, he wasn't that crazy in this series, in my opinion. Now, he was guarding MPJ, and MPJ could just shoot over him. But even when he guarded Murray, like, it was it was a, it was a bucket. Let's just say that. It was a bucket. It was a mismatch. But um, Austin Reeves, I'm going to have to put him. I think he's going to be the top of, oh, nah, he's going to be right there. Um, Robert Williams, Robert Williams needs to go back down. I mean, um, the Heat kind of, like, took advantage of Robert Williams uh, for the most part in the series. That's how we got up 3-0. Um, they tried to start him the first two games. You see, they tried to make a change in game three. They kind of st stayed with the change. Like, I, if you watched my video yesterday, I just said the Celtics kind of just quit on the coach, in a way, game three. But, yeah, Grant Williams, for the most part, um, he's a great defender. Um, he's a great defender. Great rebound. Well, not great re rebounder, but a, a good hustle player. A good rebounder, especially on offensive boards. But, like, offense, all he can do is really just catch lobs and get rebounds. That's about it. But defensively, he can do a lot of things. But, like, his him playing drop coverage, like, makes it so easier for the like the Heat to get open shots. Because everybody on the Heat, they have confidence. They play with confidence. And that's just kind of just what the team kind of embodies. Just, like, over-exceeding and just playing with, like, a chip on your shoulder. And, like... That's like it, it kind of allowed players like Caleb Martin to really have great games. Duncan Robinson get players like yeah. Even with Bam being as bad as he was scoring the ball, like when they was putting Rob Williams on Caleb Martin on Bam, it would make the offense for Heat so easy. I think it was a good switch, honestly, to put Robert Williams on Jimmy in Game Seven when he was guarding him for the most part. I think that was that was good, um, but yeah, it just it just is what it is. Um, I think he did. He does deserve to go down here. Maybe right. No, he's probably right there. Probably right there. Michael Porter Jr. I think my bro. This was funny, bro, because I, like I said in the video yesterday, I think the the Lakers fell into the trap first, putting AD on Jokic, where Jokic AD was so important to the Lakers because he was that help defender. He was that funnel everything to the paint, getting like five blocks a game defender, like ridiculous level defender. Um. So that made it really like it really showed how bad the Lakers defense really was if they just didn't have Anthony Davis being by far the best defender in the playoffs. But then the adjustment they made to that was putting even more attention on guarding Jokic, where they tried to have somebody else guard Jokic and AD help. But when AD was helping, he was really Jokic was playing with the ball and it was throwing a lot of attention to Jokic. And the the Lakers are just terrible off ball defenders. Like their majority of their team is bad off ball defenders. The only one that I think is a good off ball defender is Dennis Schroeder. I think Vanderbilt is okay, but like he's really more of an on ball defender, point of attack defender, um, versatile defender where he can switch and be able to guard multiple people. He's not really he's a good on ball defender, but like when it comes to like the other players, like the D'Angelo Russells, like the Lebrons. Lebron is a good on ball defender or off ball defender in certain situations. He's not really an off-ball defender that you want to be running around, guarding, and getting switched and running around screens and all that type of stuff. That's not what you really want LeBron to do, especially at this age. So it's a couple of players, people like that on the uh, Lakers, not just LeBron. But, yeah, for the most part, that's really what the Lakers was, especially when you're going to have Anthony Davis just sitting in the paint to help to guard the paint and just letting – you're pretty much playing four-on-five defense, to be real, after that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Michael Porter, where should I put Michael Porter? They even, bro, stuff like that was, I said all that to say because it was making, bro, Michael Porter is on the court to strictly shoot and crash the board sometimes. For all, and I'm not even thinking about defense rebound, like offenses. In this in this series, the Nuggets, like, kind, I don't know what they did, but they, they, they had Michael Porter making extra passes. They had Michael Porter passing the ball. I've never seen this. I've, I, I've, I've never seen it. I've never seen it. They had Michael Porter making playmaking, like, play, like, good playmaking plays never seen i've never seen it before like i've never seen it but yeah uh michael porter um uh, shooting the ball is what he does he shot really well defense i think re rim protection he's really good he was even okay on ball 
off the ball, but like he's not a good on ball off the ball defender in my opinion. But he was above his standards in my opinion. So I think I think MPJ deserves to be in this in this tier, either this tier or right here. It's one of these at the bottom. Like it's it's one of these. I'm gonna put him right here, Marcus Smart. I think game one, Marcus Smart was really good, and then they took the ball out of his hands in the second half, and it fell apart. Um, at the game one, he really didn't play as much on the ball, but for the, when he did play on the ball, he made some good decisions passing the ball. I think he was shooting the ball really well um, when they were winning, especially in game five and game six. He shot the, he shot the pill off the ball, um, especially when it came to hitting big shots in game six. He was hitting some big shots. Um, but yeah, Mal Marcus Smart, Marcus Smart, I think, I think Marcus Smart deserves where he is. Malcolm Brogdon, yeah, he wasn't really that good in this series. I'll put him right here. Um, Derek Wright, I think for the most part, for the most part, I think Derek Wright was the best player on the Celtics, most consistent player on the Celtics. Um, so... Yeah, I think for the playoffs, he's been one of the, arguably the most consistent. I think in the second round, Derek Wright wasn't as consistent. I think first round, he was consistent. This round, he was consistent. Second round, it was where it was kind of shaky. But for the most part, he's like, in the game they were winning, he was like the most important person. Like, people don't say it was Tatum, but like, as a Heat fan, going against the Celtics, I was really more scared of Derek White in a lot of situations. Like, it felt like at a point that he was making the perfect decision in a lot of situations. Like if he was he was open for three, he was hitting it. He was making the right passes. He was driving. It was either a layup or a foul. Like it was it was really like he didn't seem like he was making the perfect decisions. It just felt like that. So yeah, I feel like in games like four through six, you could argue Derek White was the best player on the court. You really could. Even tonight, even tonight he played pretty well. I, I, it's really on you how you feel about that. Um, I, I'm not gonna go too crazy. I'm gonna put him. I'm gonna put him in terms of the caliber player he is. I think he is a role player riser, all star dropper. But I'm gonna put him really right here. Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon. He for the most part really didn't do much. He, 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 um. Even with the like, like the Lakers getting taken advantage of in a lot of situations, Aaron Gordon didn't really play that good offensively in the series until like the last game. The last game he played, he finally had a good game. But for the most part, defense defense is really where like he made his impact, and he was easily in a series with Anthony Davis. I would argue he was Aaron Gordon was the best defender. That may be a stretch though. I think that's really because Anthony Davis just job and like. I don't want to blame the coach, but, like, they just didn't really know what to do. And they just, they fell into the first trap and they fell into the second trap. That's what I've explained that too many times already. But because the fact that, like, Eddie Davis they couldn't do that much, I think Aaron Gordon impact-wise. Now, game seven, Braun was hooping. But for the most part, LeBron was really, even in game seven, he was settling for a lot of threes. It's just like in the first half, he wasn't missing. Like, he wasn't missing. So, like, I feel like a lot of that had to do with because Aaron Gordon was like, he's like, you can't really, LeBron, as big, strong, and fast, and he still is at 38, Aaron Gordon is just as big and strong, if not bigger at this point. And he's a lot younger. So, yeah, I think Aaron Gordon did a good job defensively for the most part, especially on Braun or really whoever he guarded. Even sometimes when he was guarding AD, I think he did a really good job, especially in them non-Jokic minutes. I think he did a really good job, but I think he should. He deserves to go, like, right here. Whoa. Yeah, like, right here. All right, Bam. Um, As bad as Bam was scoring the ball, like, his playmaking was so crucial. The, the big issues with me, Bam, is, like, the catching the ball, like, you got to catch the ball. When it comes to hitting your shots, like, if you're going to keep taking the mid-range that I've seen you hit all year, but it's just not falling at all in the playoffs, like, I don't know what to tell you, Bam. You got to you gotta, you gotta minimize how many of those you take. And you got to take advantage of the defense. Like, 
I'm gonna be honest. Robert Williams is a defender that can actually stay in front of Bam. Bam can't just simply blow by him. But Aaron Al Horford, the only way Al Horford can stay in front of Bam when it comes to Bam trying to get around him is Al Horford. What Al Horford would do, he'll pretty pretty much like he'll do like an open hand punch to Bam's shoulder, like and it's not even like his inside shoulder. It'll be his outside shoulder to make sure he can't get the edge on him. It's a foul every time. The refs just don't call it. Now, I will say this. Bam got fouled a lot in the series. I know that can be aggravating. Bam is injured. I understand it. But he got to be better scoring the ball. He got to be better catching the ball. But with Bam, even in the games we lost, for the most part, especially game seven, when he played the whole game, bro, the important Bam has on the heat, like, I would argue it's more important for the heat than it is the Lakers because the Lakers, they were playing with Rui. Our backup big is Cody Zeller. Now, and I think Cody Zeller to end the year was much better than Deadman, but like, come on, bro. Like, that, like, it was, a, it was an auto, I said this yesterday, it was like an auto 19 to 2 run just from Bam leaving the court. In game uh, five, we lost the first quarter by 15. Bam came out the game, they went on a stupid, crazy run. He plays the whole second quarter, we only lose by two. He plays the, pretty much the whole third quarter. Like, I don't really know what to say about that. I, Bam impact defensively. Alone. All NBA caliber. Alone. Alone. Playmaking wise, he was great playmaking wise. The only thing is, Bam, you got to catch the ball. You got to be a better scorer. But off defense alone, I think he deserved this. Um, Jamal Murray, in this series, in this series, got to be MVP caliber, bro. Like, that nigga was doing prime Curry stuff. Like, yeah, he got to be MVP. He got to be MVP caliber at the least. <laughs> like, low, like at the least, like, he's there. Like, you could really argue that Nuggets had the two best players in this round. Like, they played out of their mind. Like, <laughs> they played out of their minds, bro. They play, Like, you could literally argue they had the two best players in the round this that we just had. Jason Tatum, um, in my honest opinion, um, you can say he got injured in Game Seven. In Game Seven, he was he missed a wide open layup. Is that because of an injury? He was missing wide open standstill threes. Is that because of an ankle injury? I can understand if you're saying he's not blowing by people, but he was still blowing by people. He blew by people twice to get dunks. So I don't know. Um, you can see that he was definitely injured, but I ain't made that. I ain't make that uh, excuse about Jimmy and Bam all see all series. So I, I mean, I, I understand he was injured, but he wasn't. It's not like he was injured the whole series, nigga. Like the inconsistency that Tatum had for the entirety of the series. Like the only game he really like had his little Jason Tatum game was what game was that they won? I think that was Game Four. Yeah, I think that was Game Four. Yeah, he yeah that game he played great. Um, game Six, first half. What I'll say about that is. Bro, if a player gets 11 free throws and it's nine minutes left in the second, bro, like, come on, bro. You're literally giving him warm, like, you're letting him warm up. You're letting him warm it up. Like, bro, he's going to get hot. Like, he got hot. Like, he got hot off the free throws. That's understood. In the second half, he did nothing. He did nothing. So, like, yeah, I, I, I yeah, I don't really. And even in that game, he, he shot, like, eight for 21. Like, like, no, bro, I'm not giving you that, bro, like. For the most part, he was very inconsistent, very bad. Like, the turnovers was very costly for the Celtics. Like, yeah, he was awful. I would say I would say he's a dropper for that series. He's a dropper. I think Derek White, like I said, I think Derek White played better, but you just expect more out of Tatum. So I think that's why I see that as that. Um, JB, yeah, JB, no. Yeah, no, 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 no. Like, JB, no. Yeah, you actually, you actually deserve to go down there. Like, you were tripping, like. The turnovers you were getting was like, it's like you was trying to throw the game. I'm going to be honest. Like, I'll fuck with you, JB. You my guy. I'm a JB defender. I'm going to always defend you. I've been saying for years, JB the best JB. That was cap. I was trolling. I trolled. Like, I was saying JB better than Tatum. I still low-key believe that a little bit because JB can have this bad series. But, like, in my opinion, I still think JB is just much more consistent. Tatum's consistency is just... In the Hawks series, in the 76ers, like, it's like a glaring issue. When it comes to JB, it feel like he'll have, like, a good start, and his whole his own team will ice him out. I don't know what that is. 
I don't know if it's they know he's gone. I don't know if they, it's because they think when he get them stupid ass turnovers, they think he be throwing the game. I don't know what it is, but I ain't gonna lie. Some of them turnovers he be getting is funny as hell to watch. As a, as a Heat fan, it's very funny to watch. But yeah, um, yeah, JB, yeah, you yeah, you gotta go below De Derek White. Derek White definitely played better than you in this round for sure. I think Derek White played better than Tatum too, but like, I think Tatum still was getting rebounds. Like, I think Tatum was still getting assists. Um, defensively, I don't think he was as good as people was acting. I, I seen the I seen the thing about Tatum guarding Jimmy Butler. I'm gonna be honest, bro. Game three to to six, they double teamed him pretty much the whole series. I don't know what happened in game seven. Jay, Jay, in my opinion, Jimmy didn't even really play that good, man. I'm gonna be honest, he didn't even really play that good with the one on ones he was getting. He was missing a lot of shots he usually would make. But like, yeah, I don't know why they just stopped doubling him. But like. People giving Tatum, like, credit for, like, the double. Like, the, they were giving him, like, all the credit, saying, like, Jimmy was even scared of him. I don't know. I think, I think, I think, I I, I think Jay, Jimmy just played awful. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't really know to tell you. I think he just played bad. Uh, we can get a credit to the defense, but I think the better defender on Jimmy was Derek White. I think that's who the – if y'all want to get credit to somebody for Jimmy playing bad, I think y'all should get that to Derek White. Derek White defensively in my opinion, was the biggest factor on Jimmy. So, that's just me. That's just me. Um, like, I'm not saying that they were doubling Jimmy, by the way, game three to game six, like, the entire time, every time he touched it. No, they didn't do that. But in, like, game seven, it felt like they didn't double on him at all. It felt like they helped on him, like, really only in the first two. Like, they weren't even helping on him like that. So, I don't know. I don't know if that was really kind of spo kind of, Using, utilizing, spa utilizing spacing a little different way than he did in any of the other games because he probably did a lot of adjustments in that game. But, yeah, I don't really know. All right, and LeBron. Um, I think LeBron in game one, I think he played good, but he lost him the game. I think the reason why he lost him the game was one shot. But the Lakers had no business winning that game. So I don't really blame LeBron for that game. I think he played good. Um, he pretty much played good for the most part. It's just like, I don't even think he was really even trolling that hard with threes. He, whatever game he had, six threes is where he really, like, lost in the game. I think when he shot four threes, that wasn't that bad. Like, when he shot six threes, like, come on, nigga. Like, stop. That nigga, stop. And they was up. Now, I think it was a game two. Game, game one, they were really down. And then the coach made some good adjustments. And Nuggets, they were kind of missing. I don't, I don't think they wasn't ready for the adjustment. I think they just was missing. They started missing. And I'm going to be honest. Um, for the most part, the Nuggets was hitting some crazy shots. But I, but people were saying the adjustments that the Lakers did. I keep saying this. I don't think y'all understand. In that game one, in the second half, go look up how many times the Lakers missed in general in the second half. They weren't missing anything. Like, anything. The only miss is for real. Like, Y'all gonna think I hate Braun, but like he was low key the only person missing when it came to them threes. And and then at the end, uh, they, I I think Yogi stripped him, but somebody said Jamal Murray stripped him. I don't know what happened, but yeah, he he even got that turnover at the end. But yeah, uh, yeah, Braun, he kind of helped. He kind of bailed the, the the Nuggets from choking that game because the Nuggets definitely deserved to win, but they also was kind of trying to give the Lakers the game at the same time. If that makes sense. Then the game two, the Lakers definitely should have won that game. But LeBron in the fourth quarter, it's like he was in a three-point contest. Like, nigga, stop. Like, you didn't have a three the whole playoffs or some shit like that. And he just kept uh, pulling, pulling, pulling. Like, bro, chill out. In the fourth quarter in the playoffs, he had like, we were like one for 20 at one point or something like that. And he just kept shooting them. I don't know what was going on. Like, and then it's, it's, the crazy part is he was shooting the threes. Giving, it was like he was giving them fast break because he was shooting them early in the shot clock. Jamal Murray on the other end is not missing. So, like, I didn't really understand the thought process at all when it came to LeBron. That's why I say, that's why I say in this playoffs, LeBron has kind of not been as good of a decision maker. I think in this series, besides the threes, he's a pretty good decision maker. I think he had some bad turnovers, but, like, he wasn't having as many bad turnovers in terms of how many times he was touching ball in comparison to the other series. I think he was having some bad turnovers in the other series. He had some bad shots in the other series. But he played a lot more on the ball in this series. So, like, he having all them turnovers aren't that crazy anymore because when you're having the ball significantly more, you're going to get turnovers. When you have the ball significantly more, you're going to shoot some bad shots. You're not going to be as – it's just a lot harder to be perfect when you're doing more. It's just It just is. 
So, I think Braun, honestly, in this series, arguably had his best series in terms of consistency. The only thing Braun was really tripping on was the three. Like, I think even on defense, Braun played good defense. I think he's just not a good, consistent off-ball defender. I think he, when it comes to the chase down blocks, he's a great off-ball chase down block. But besides that, he's not, like, he's not that good of an off-ball defender. Like, the consistency on a play-to-play basis. They'll, he'll have a play where he, he'll he navigate the screens and tell you go there and him go here. But, like, for the most part, no, he's not. He's not. He's not. He's like, he's taking break on defense so he can be better on offense. He's 38 years old. He's year 20. It just is what it is. He's just not the same old LeBron. But, yeah. Uh, I'm about to say Bron. He had 40, 10, and 9. Yeah, nah, we keep it Bron here. We keep it Bron here. We keep it Bron here. Even with how bad he played those first three games, we, yeah, Bron, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jimmy Butler. I think Jimmy Butler in this series was just an all-NBA caliber player, to be real. Um, I think game one and two, he was he, he took over game two at the end with Grant Williams, but I don't think he was that good. But, like, when he took over, it, like, equaled into a good game. Game one, he was best player on the court. Game seven, best player on the court. The other four, one was a blowout for us, two was a blowout for them. One, he was terrible. But at the end, he, he almost bailed us out. I'm not going to lie. Even though I think he was awful, like, horrible. Both ends, by the way. Like, in them game four to six, like, it wasn't just offense. Jimmy was bad on both ends. And even I, even in the game he had 29, like, Jimmy was tripping, bro. I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't know what was going on, but, like, I don't know. I don't know if it's the double teams or health, but, like, Jimmy was second-guessing himself a lot. Like, if Jimmy was just being aggressive like he was in the Buck series, like, I can't complain. I just can't complain, but he was just... I don't know. Even in Game 7, he was just, like, anti-aggressive. But he played good for the most part, um, especially defensively. Um, I, I say this all the time. Jimmy, top DB. Top DB. Um, Andy Davis, yeah, got to drop you, gang, because offensively, I think he was really tired offensively, but he still wasn't that good. But I still think I still think he, for the totality of the playoffs, has been the second-best player. It's either him or Jimmy, in my opinion. I think the way Jimmy played in those three games was far exceedingly worse than Anthony Davis because even with, like, AD is just, the thing is, the reason why AD can't guard Jokic is because AD is not a post defender. It's a completely different thing from being a post defender and a rim protector. AD is arguably the best rim protector in the league. In the playoffs, he's been by far the best rim protector in the league. In the playoffs, he's been a great rim protector that can switch out on guards. He's a very he was a very versatile defender in that, and when it came to him being a rim protector, it made like the all right. Think of it like this: the way Jokic makes everybody better on the court offensively, that's kind of what Anthony Davis was doing for the Lakers for the most part. Like going into the series, I was trying to tell y'all it was gonna be a hardwood classic because that's pretty much what both of them do for each team. Like Anthony Davis patrolling the paint makes it so much, bro. Say, for instance, like, have y'all ever played 2K? I, I'm a 2K YouTuber, too. So, like, I got to give y'all this example. When you're on 2K and you're in, like, a 2-3 zone, you're at the wreck or something. You're in a 2-3 zone. All you got to do is pretty much play 3 high because you got a man in a paint. It's a lot easier to play 3 high and just bump as much as possible just to make sure that they don't get no, no 3 and not even worry about the rim run than you having to be ISOed on an island one-on-one -on -one and there's no help at the rim because Jokic just take him out the rim or they're just playing help defense. Like, it's a lot harder to do that. It's just a lot harder. And Davis was really masking a lot of things that was going on with the Lakers defense. And the Nuggets was just exploiting a lot of the things that was going on with the Lakers defense while making Anthony Davis as least impactful as possible. For Andy Davis standards, I think he had a drop in this series, impact-wise. I still think he was the second-best defender. Impact-wise, I think he wasn't the best defender in his series, though. If you if we talk about impact-wise, because he just wasn't able to make up for his uh, teammates, and he just wasn't as good in his one-on-one -on -one matchup anymore. So, like, it just is what it is. He just wasn't as good. Now, Jamal Murray, like I said, bro, like... In, in any other series, 33 points per game on 50-40-90 is getting the, the conference MVP, the finals MVP, whatever you call it. Any other series. But Yoke is going out there getting like 28, 12, and 12 on crazy efficiency. 
All right, come on, bro. And I'm going to be honest. Y'all saying Jokic is a bad defender. Jokic is not a bad defender. This is the same shit I was telling y'all. Jokic is not a bad defender. You do the same shit with Embiid. You put Embiid in space with an elite guard. An elite guard. He's going to struggle. Now, is Embiid going to get more stops in space than Jokic? Yes, he's a much better defender. But Jokic is not a bad defender. He's a decent to a good defender. And he's a good rim protector as well. The only reason why y'all don't think he's a good rim protector is because he doesn't get shot blocks. Like, that's like, like what makes Andy Davis crazy is because he can shot block and stay crazy as a good rim protector when, it, when he doesn't even get blocks. And AD just has a crazy sense of getting a block. Like, it's just, he has an insane sense of getting blocks. It's just, it's really like no one on that level when it comes to his sense of knowing where the ball is. He, I seen a clip of AD with his back turned, and he just threw his hand up. He av- he avoided the foul and got a perfectly shot block and tipped it to his teammate perfectly. All in one play with his back turned. Amazing play. Amazing play. But, yeah, Jokic. Yeah, going into the playoffs, I thought Jokic was the best player on earth. I thought it was a debate between him and Giannis. It is no longer a debate. I don't know what more you need from him, from what he did in the Sun series, what he did in the Lakers series. I find it funny that the Lakers fans out there really think that, like, the Nuggets are just the best team on earth. But I'm going to be, I hate to break it to you guys. You guys are the only team to get swept by them. Like, I don't know if y'all understand that. Like, I'm not saying that the Timberwolves beat the Lakers in a series, but they damn near beat y'all in the play in. I don't know if y'all forgot that, but they damn near did. Now, Suns, I ain't gonna lie. I think the Lakers' depth will be interesting. The matchups will be interesting, but Suns got two games on them. That's just what I'm saying. Now, I do think if the Warriors played the Nuggets, they definitely would have got a game on them because the like I think the Nuggets would have still beat the Warriors, but I think the way the Warriors would have tried to exploit like what they did last year, they would have tried to get Jokic in the pick and roll, get him switched out to Curry a lot, and really put play him one on one, they would have tried to do that a lot. And I think that's what something that the Lakers that's why I said they probably should have Reeves play more on the ball so they could try to take advantage of Jokic a little bit more. Because be real, um I don't really know why LeBron wasn't trying to get Jokic switched on him, but like Bron ain't really blown by people. Like Bron, he all bully ball right now. Like he he blow by you, but it's like it's like he running through you really more than anything. Like that shit is really a foul. I'm going to be honest. What him and Giannis be doing is Roki a foul. I'm not going to lie, but they don't call it. But it is what it is. That's my tier list. Um, very interesting series. Um, like, I'm saying, all right, hey. I know people going to be like, hey, Celtics, they almost came back. Almost ain't shit to me. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Almost ain't good enough for me. It's my tier list for this round. Um, actually, I got to predict how it's going to be looking in this next round. Okay. So, my predictions. Um... Oh, Caleb Martin, if Caleb Martin was on here, Caleb Martin would be all-star right here with Derek Wright, right in front of Derek Wright. Caleb Martin, arguably, I think Bam honestly had a more of a MVP, like a, a as a full series, I think Caleb Martin had a, had a higher, I think Bam had a higher um, thing than Jimmy because Bam defensively every game, even when we lost, Bam's impact defensively when it's on and off, like, his impact was ridiculous. Um, but Caleb Martin was the, like, he should have won it. He was the most consistent player on both ends, no matter what. Like, Bam was consistent defensively, but he wasn't consistent on both ends. Jimmy wasn't consistent at all, like, just in general. Caleb was consistent every game. I think Caleb deserved it. Um, so, I wish they had Max Strews, Gabe Vincent. I wish they had, like, I wish they had more of Heat role players on here that actually plays. But if I had to put Gabe Vincent anywhere, it's role player because he his, his, his tendency to take a terrible shot, his tendency to do a terrible turnover is too high. I can't put it any higher than that. And he's not really – I don't know, bro. I seen the the the, wide, the 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 um the wild nigga that be on Twitter that got like a million followed or a million followers, something like that. Bro, bro, that game where Gabe sat out, they literally just took advantage of Cody Zeller in the game in the minutes Bam sat. Like, it is what it is. But that's just what happens. Um. Vincent would have made not a big difference in that, to be honest with you. But, yeah. Um, I'm hearing Hero coming back game three. I think Hero will be very important in this series for the Heat because if he would have played against the Bucks, he would have been very important for the Heat because attacking the drop coverage. Jokic is going to want to play drop coverage. 
the Bucks are going to play drop coverage. Now, the, another thing is, when it comes to the Celtics, he wouldn't be, uh, he was going to attack the drop coverage that Robert Williams is going to play. But the thing is, he's going to have, b like, the second, third, fourth best defender on the court for the, <laughs> the Celtics are just so much better. On ball, when I'm talking about, I'm talking about on ball defenders. When I'm talking about on ball defenders, then the Nuggets, then the Bucks. The Bucks don't want to put Giannis on anybody. They want him to help. They want Brick Lopez to play the paint. Drew Holiday is guarding Jimmy. Who else is playing defense? Chris Middleton is not a good defender anymore. When it comes to the um, when it comes to the Nuggets again, Jokic is playing drop coverage. <laughs> when it comes to Aaron Gordon, he's guarding Jimmy. Who's guarding the hero? Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr. Oh, they probably put Ken Davis call with Pope or Bruce Brown. I ain't gonna lie. 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 But yeah, hero, I would rather hero in this series than I would against the uh, Celtics. Let's say that because Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Derek White, Tatum, all those, well, not Tatum, but all those other players are better defenders than Pope, Bruce, you know what I'm saying, Jamal Murray. Um, but yeah. Yeah, they probably definitely gonna put. Caldwell Pope and Brown over Hero. Now I'm thinking about it. I'm not gonna lie. So they actually got some pretty decent matchups. I ain't gonna lie. Now I'm thinking about it. But yeah, I think I think Hero. I think Hero plays. He's coming back off a, a broken hand injury on his shooting hand. So I'm not expecting too much out of him. I'm gonna be honest. But having that that three levelness, the threat of it being there, I think that's a big deal. And we can just take a defender that's one of their main defenders out to play because he's gonna space the floor. That's gonna be very important. But they also are going to try to target him on defense. So that's interesting to see. So I'm interested to see how that works. I don't think Hero is nowhere near as bad a defender as he was in previous years. I think this is by far his best defensive year. I think last year was even pretty decent defensively, but he was nowhere near as good as he was or had been this year. Now, I don't know how that's going to work out with him coming off injury. He didn't play today because he's still kind of, he's not clear for contact and all that type of stuff. He's still conditioning and all that, but he's, his shot looks straight already. I don't know how when you ain't shooting because you have a broken hand, but his shot looks straight already. Just saying. Um, Kyle Lowry is going to be so, like, so important in this series. Oladipo would be so important in this series, but he's not playing. Um, I expect K-Love to get minutes in this series because, but they could do the Jamal, put do the switch and get Jamal Murray, Kyle, Kevin Love matchup. They could. So if they do that, I don't think, I think Kevin Love is going to be kind of the same. Um, Kyle Lowry, if he can be consistent, I think he can be a role player riser. I think he can be a role player riser right there. Um, but none of these other players, uh, Bruce Brown, um, the heat, they don't really get a lot of turnovers to be honest. And I think Bruce Brown kind of strives off turnovers, but if Bruce Brown can, um, can kind of play kind of like how Marcus Smart was kind of playing. Uh, no, nah, because Bruce Brown, not as good of a playmaker, but he's a better slasher in my opinion. He may even be a better defender. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Marcus Smart is such an overrated defender. Um, but I do think he is a good, but like people that, people that think he's a defensive player of the year caliber defender, that's just psychotic. But, um, Bruce Brown, if he can play good defense, knock down the three ball, I think he could, I think he can be, I think in this series, he'll be like closer to this. I don't think he's going to get as many fast break opportunities. So I think that's going to lower his value a little bit. I think KCP is going to be very important. If he can knock down shots and play good defense, especially when Harold comes back, that's going to be very, extremely valuable. Um, now, Duncan, in this series, I don't know how valuable he's going to play, depending on how much minutes Hero comes back first game back. Like, I doubt Hero like, gets a lot of minutes first game back. So, like, I'm sure somebody's role is going to get taken. It's not going to be Caleb Martin. So, like, whether that's Struz or Duncan, somebody's role is going. I don't know if that's Struz, Duncan. I don't know if that's Gabe. I don't know who it is. But somebody's role is going. So like that's somebody that's not that's somebody that's getting minutes that's not. Now another person that shouldn't get their role taken, Highsmith. He should be on here. The definition of a W role player. <laughs> like he is. He just is. Um but yeah, D Duncan I think is going to be yeah. His role when if he can keep doing what he's doing right now when when Hero back, I think he can stay right there. Um we can take all these dudes off that's not in here any like all these losers that's like lost like we can yeah, we can take these guys off like Y'all not even in here no more. Like, we can take all you guys off. Let's just, yeah, let's just, yeah, let's just, yeah, let's clean this up a little bit. Like, it was getting a little messy. Let's clean this up a little bit. Yeah, all right. All right, so, yeah, um, Duncan, yeah. If he can play his role, knock his shots down, 
it's going to be very important for Jimmy and Bam. The reason why Duncan is so important and so impactful is because neither one of Jimmy and Bam are consistent three-point shooters, especially Bam. He doesn't shoot threes at all. And, yeah, um, that's, that spacing is very important. He gets so much attention. Teams respect him so much. Aaron Gordon can go back up here because Aaron Gordon really was all-star second round because of his assignment on KD. If he can really play some great defense on Jimmy, yeah, he's back up there to all-star. I think MPJ goes back down uh, like role player riser, all-star playoff dropper because I don't think he's going to be as consistent shooting. I don't think he's going to be. I'm pretty sure that's who Jimmy's going to guard, to be honest with you. I think Caleb is going to probably guard like Gordon or something like that. I don't know who's going to guard either one of them. It's going to be either Jimmy or Caleb, I'm, I'm sure. But, like, hopefully we be in a zone regardless because that zone that we play, that's kind of just our best defense. And it's really tough for people to score on it for some reason. I don't know how NBA-level players can't score on the zone, but I guess it is NBA, like, high NBA defense. So, And it's good to help us hide, like, players like Hero and Duncan because if we're in man, they're going to get targeted. Now, the reason why Kevin Love can't play in the zone because Love and – Bam can't play together. They just can't. So, yeah. Um, Bam, I'm going to be honest. I, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. Defensively, I think Bam is going to be even better. Bam, won, like, versatility defensively. I think Bam is a better post defender. The only hole Bam has is height. That's the only hole, honestly, like, height. If he was taller, had more length, if he had as much length and height as Andy Davis, like, bro. He, he probably would lose his, like, his, like his um, lateral quickness, though. That's the only thing. So I don't even know if I want him to be taller because the reason why he is so versatile is because maybe he is a little undersized. But, yeah. I'm expecting Bam to have a great series defensively, impact-wise. But the key is Bam, like, if Bam can really, like, if we can depend on Bam to hold Jokic to around 25 a night, a night, no 30 bombs out of nowhere. Like, no 40 bombs out of Jokic. Just 25 a night, a consistent round 25. Maybe make Jokic be more passive. If we can do that, we we can win. The thing is, the only thing is, Jimmy cannot have those three games. So, I'm going to be honest. The on, I think I think that the, the Celtics have a lot of people to throw at Jimmy. So, and Aaron Gordon being the really only real good matchup for Jimmy... Aaron Gordon's not going to play 48 minutes. They may do something like where they match his minutes with Jimmy, but that's a lot of minutes of one person guarding one person. Look at that. Look at how that worked out for Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday is a much better perimeter defender, but Aaron Gordon may be a much better matchup for Jimmy's play style. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. I expect Jimmy to not play nowhere near as bad as he just did. I expect him to go up. Now, Jamal Murray. I don't think Jamal Murray has nowhere near the consistency as he did. I think Spo is really like... Just let me know the last time Spo, uh, a, 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 go, a superstar, Spo has allowed to just dominate him. You cannot, you cannot show me that. Like that, like the last time that's happened, you just can't show me. Like even Tatum last year, extremely inconsistent. JB last year, extremely. This year, extremely inconsistent. Um, second round, Jalen Bronson is the closest, but is he even a superstar? I don't think so. If you think he's a superstar, then yeah, that's the last one. JB definitely was crazy, but he only got them two wins. And he wasn't even, in my opinion, that like he had the last game five and six, yeah. But like game two, he was good. But like for the whole series, he wasn't like at nowhere near what Jamal Murray was on for the whole series of the conference finals. Jamal Murray in that conference finals was like every night, even the one game where he was off in the fourth quarter, he had like twenty five points. Like I don't know what to tell you, but yeah, uh, Jamal Murray. I don't expect Jamal Murray to be as good as he was. I think he's gonna go right back down here. But I do think they still have the best player in the uh, league. I think even if uh, Jokic is getting like 25, the most you can do it, as if you're the Heat is get the ball out of Jokic's hands. I think what we do is we get the ball out of Jokic's hands and we double-team Murray, help, like, show him a lot of traps because I don't, I don't really think Murray is that good of a playmaker. I don't really think really anybody else on the uh, Nuggets is a good playmaker. They have people that can pass, but, like, that's not who you want to be your main distributor. That's why they have Jokic, and he makes everybody else so much better. So, like, they're going to probably try to, even when we do that, they're going to probably try to, do, like, play through Warren a little bit. And I would, I, I like my chances with that or Brown more, way more than them playing through Jokic. I like that way more. If we can make Jokic be very passive in this series, if we can make, if we can pretty much try to take Jamal Murray out the game, like, completely when it comes to scoring the ball, 
I think that's going to give us the best chance. I think that's what Spo is going to try to do. I honestly think that. I've never seen a series where Spo just lets one person beat them, like in a in a series. I just never seen that. I never seen that. I've just never seen that. So, I, hey, if that happens, credit to him, credit to him. But I just, I just don't recall that happening. To be real with you, like, I, like especially in the Jimmy Bam era, I have just not recalled that happening. So I'm interested to see that happen if that does. I can't wait to see it. As a Heat fan, I'm living on cloud nine. Y'all may say that's a blown 3-0, but all I see is an NBA final. Hey, I tried to make that rhyme. But, yeah, if y'all want more videos like this, make sure to like a like. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. Turn the notifications to be the first at every single one of the videos. Without further ado, man, it's your boy Fitz. And I out there, man, man.